This video is brought to you by Adorama.com. Hello and welcome. I'm actually going to start this video a little bit different. We're here on a freeze frame for two reasons. One, I just learned how to do a freeze frame. And two, I wanted to briefly go over this scope and why this video is going to be fairly short compared to other ones. See, in my opinion, this scope falls in a very niche category. First off, it's magnification range, it's lack of adjustable objective, and it's lack of illumination. With those three things, you sort of left with the scope that becomes super bare bones and sort of limited with what you could really use it for. Ideally, this would be good for someone that's shooting it beyond 100 yards, whether you're a target shooter or a hunter for that matter. And why 100 yards and beyond? That's because that's what the fixed parallax is set to, 100 yards. Anything inside that's gonna be a little bit blurry and anything beyond that should be pretty much fine. Both of which are examples that you are gonna see very soon. But the one last thing I wanted to touch on is the scope shadow. I had recently reviewed the VXR 4 to 12. That at 4X versus 12X would shift the eye box forward or backwards and give you really bad scope shadow. I was curious to see if this would do the same. And it kinda does. This power transformer is about 30 yards away and as you can see, it doesn't get in focus. That's because there's no adjustable parallax setting on this scope. It's fixed at 100 yards. If we focus our attention beyond 100 yards, in this case around 400, you'll see that everything beyond is going to be perfectly crisp. Now, as we go from 4X to 12X here, notice the edges. It gets dark in the corners, it brightens up once we get around 5 to 6X, and once we get to the maximum magnification, you'll see it darkens up again. Now, here it doesn't seem too bad, but I assure you it's a little bit worse in person. One thing we can say that's positive, though, is just how sharp everything is. Everything has a lot of resolution, it's got a lot of fine detail to it. Colors might seem a little bit muted, but it's not terrible. Another thing to note is that there's very little chromatic aberration. And another good thing is there's a fair amount of light coming through this, despite the fact it's only a one inch tube. We're now gonna focus our attention on a roughly 700 to 800 yard far away power tower. That tree line's probably about 150 to 200 yards out, and you can see they're both fairly well in focus to one another. It's really nice to know that despite the fact this is a fixed parallax setting, it's still very usable. Here's another good example. That's a speed limit sign at roughly 700 yards. That power transformer tower is roughly four to 500. And you can see that when we zoom in, well, first off, you can take note of the slightly darker edges. Again, everything is still usably in focus to one another. It's really good that if you're trying to take a shot on a target, you don't have to worry about futzing around with your parallax settings. That's one of the nice things about the scope. You just zoom in, get on target and squeeze. We're now inside 70 yards staring at that stone building, and we're gonna play around a little bit with the eye box, both up and down and left and right. As you can see, it's actually fairly forgiving. You really have to be off axis a lot to not be able to look through the scope. There's also very little distortion. The only thing you're gonna see is a parallax shift between different objects at different distances. And again, that's to be expected from a fixed parallax scope like this. Now let's talk about something a little bit more harsh. Take a look at the scope shadow. At 12X here, it starts to get really dark, and I think it's primarily because of the high contrast environment that we're in. In the last scene, you saw that it didn't seem like it was this bad, and I think it was because it was overcast out that day and the light was just more diffused, whereas here it's much more harsh and direct. To the naked eye, it still seemed about the same. One other thing to note real quick is just how easily the reticle looks like it gets lost in the dense woods. Not ideal if you're hunting. Now let's see how well the scope tracks. If you watch my unboxing, you'll know that it's very hard to really pick up where you started and where you'd stop if you were to reset your zero. It's just very difficult to try to pick up. So I'm just gonna go as close as I can. As you just saw, the elevation controls on this are great because the reticle stays up and down perfect. However, when we go to adjust the windage, you get some really bad lift in the corners, both to the right and to the left. This is as bad as I saw it on the BSA Suite 17 that I reviewed a couple months ago, uh, except the BSA only did it to one side. So this is actually performing slightly worse than I was expecting. Elevation though was good, which is the more important one in my opinion, but still it didn't perform anywhere near as good as I was expecting. At least the elevation was good, but the windage left a lot to be desired. Now, if you think that you're gonna throw this scope on one of your favorite plankers and use it inside of 100 yards, like we're attempting to do here at 50 yards, you would have a problem. Again, it's that fixed parallax at 100 yards, which caused a lot of issues inside of it. Now, yes, your eye can adjust somewhere between the reticle and the target, but it's going to be difficult. The lower the magnification it is, the smaller the iris, and the little bit better you can focus. But if you start using higher magnification, like you see here, it's just gonna make it that much worse. 
Now, yes, it is another overcast day, but you can see how dark it gets in the edges when we zoom all the way into 12X. Now, before I get 35 comments saying that I'm stupid, yes, it's still sort of usable inside of 100 yards. It's just not ideal. It's not set up specifically for that. Now we start the full on eye box test. And again, at 4X that you saw earlier, it's very usable. It's very wide. It's very forgiving at 4X. Exceptional for when you want to just get behind the gun and get on target as quickly as you can. 8X, however, starts to diminish a little bit too much. When you get right behind it, it's great, but it's still a lot tighter than I'd like. And the same thing goes for 12X. It becomes really finicky. You've got to be perfect. The dark edges that you get at 12X don't help the cause whatsoever, but there's got to be something to give with a 1X tube, and I think that's it. Now let's move the scope to a more comfortable distance, 100 yards which just so happens to be the distance that the target that we're looking at currently is. Again, you'll note that here at 12X, the edges get dark. Now, this is as bright and as sunny as a day as you can in the middle of August, and that's as good as the corners are gonna get. However, that's my only caveat here. The center is razor sharp, and even to the edges, it's pretty damn good. There's more than enough light, and at these steel targets at 180 or so yards, you can see all the imperfections on the face from them getting struck by so many bullets. Overall, for Leopold's most budget line, I'm very impressed with how the glass looks on this. I was also impressed by how it looked on the 1.5 to 4. Look at the plume of dust kick up. Pew. It looks fantastic. So much resolution to this glass, it's not even funny. If I'm not mistaken, Leopold actually fine-tunes the layers of glass inside all the scopes by hand to make sure that you still get the highest quality scope possible. Here we are at 200. Now, it starts to get a little bit darker in the corners still, but that's because we're looking at a very bright white target in a darker environment. I had to change the exposure value just a little bit so this way we could see the paper target a little bit clearer. Same thing is going to be here at 300. The trees are very thick and thus causing a lot of shadows in this very bright daytime environment, so thus I have to change the camera settings a little bit more. It's now looking a little bit more overexposed, but that's how I had to get it to look that deep into the woods. I don't think that's much of a fault on the scope. I think that's more of a fault on my camera just not being set up to handle just how bright of a day it was, especially looking at a darker environment like that. And with that, let's get into my final thoughts. And there you have it. Like I said in the beginning, there isn't a whole lot to really talk about this. It's super bare bones, as you know. There's no fancy features about it, and I like that to a point. The fact that it's completely stripped means that it's going to be less expensive than most other options. This is around $350 to $370, depending on where you find one. And I think for that, buying an American-made scope is pretty damn good, especially when you factor in the clarity that this optic provides. This is extremely clear from 4 to 12, from 100 yards and beyond. And you know what? Even if you're being inside of 100 yards looking through this thing and your eye focuses on the object, the glass is still incredibly sharp. And that's where this thing really shines, is just how clear the glass is. The reticle is hit or miss. I thought I was going to like it, but I kind of don't, primarily because of just how tight all those hash marks are between each other. It's just a little bit too busy. Factor that in with the fact that it gets a little bit dark around the outer edge at 12x, and you know what? That's all there is to really say that's a mark against this. Everything else about it's great fit and finish, build quality. Tracking with the windage was very odd. It was also not a very large window. It was very, very minor adjustments left to right. I have seen scopes that, you know, the BSA Suite 17 is a perfect example where you just the windage and it just goes up to the stratosphere, but it allowed a lot larger degree of adjustment on your windage before it got to that point. This was the exact opposite. It was very narrow. Another good reason why you'd consider a scope like this, I feel, is just the sheer weight of it. All Leopolds are known for being super lightweight, and this is no exception. And it tops the scales at just under 10 ounces. I, I bet you'd be hard-pressed to find a scope like this, this lightweight. And that's not just with this Leopold, that's with almost all Leopolds. I would almost say that they're class leading as far as weight goes. So if weight's your concern and this scope fits you, you're, you're, you're on the right track to getting something that you're going to be really pleased with. And that's another thing I wanted to bring up. 
you aren't going to see the scope and be like, hmm, I think I could use that. You would actually have to be looking for this exact particular setup scope to use it. What I mean by that is you're not just going to say, oh, I think I can adapt that to my system quite easily. I think it's the exact opposite. And that's because of how bare bones it is. But nevertheless, if you're looking for a lightweight option, this is about as good as it gets. Or is it? For all of you that follow my channel, I also got this 4 to 12 by 44 Crossfire 2 in from Vortex. And this is, as near as makes no difference, identical to the Leopold. Except it's made, I believe, in the Philippines or China. And it's less than half the price. But is it double the weight? No. In fact, it's only two ounces heavier. So it's really not that much of a difference if you were to think of it with as just two ounces. But when you figure that this is 10 ounces and this is 12, that's 20%. So this is a lot heavier by comparison to this. However, I'm not talking about the Vortex. We're talking about this Leopold right here. And I have to say it, it's really, really good for what it is. The only thing that I can see people complaining about is the price. It's an American-made optic. You're going to pay a premium for that. But again, if you were to buy this, I think you'd be very satisfied with it, especially of the clarity of the glass. That and the fact that it has lock and adjustable eyepiece and this really super short throw for the magnification ring. Anyway, a huge thank you for Adorama.com for sending this in for review. I'm very grateful for them to help support this channel in every way that they've been doing it so far. And I honestly mean that from the bottom of my heart. And thank all of you for voting on this to get reviewed. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next time. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you, this wouldn't be possible.